This is Mr. Smith, and today we are going to be creating a short animation in HitFilm for Express. HitFilm is really meant for video editing, but you can do some animation as well, and that's what I'm going to show you today. First, a quick tip. Whenever you're doing a project that requires you to be editing multiple files and combining them together, throw them all in the same folder, and when you save your work, put the save file in that same folder. That way, if you are moving this folder from one computer to another, or backing it up or anything like that, you've got everything right in that same location and it prevents headaches in the long run. If you open HitFilm and it's looking for a file that's not in the same folder and you moved it from one computer to another, it's going to show up as a broken file and you got to go find it and download it again or find it on your camera, maybe you delete it off your camera. It's a big headache, not worth messing with. So put it all in the same folder. Okay, so I'm already in HitFilm. I am using the classic mode. Uh, your favorite workspace may vary, but I'm a big fan of classic. I've already clicked on import. And I went and found my files and imported them already. And now I'm going to start dragging things over. But wait, no, I can't drag them over yet. Because if I do this, it's just going to look like really bad and annoying. And I can't do the animation here. I need to make a composite shot. So I'm going to click on New, Composite Shot. And I could change this stuff, but I'm not going to. Not this time. A 30 second animation is what I'm fine with. If you want it to be a shorter animation, that's when you change it. Changing it later is problematic. And I'm going to take each of these things that I want and drag them right on into here. So these bushes, put them in there. That's going to be my foreground. My Middle ground is going to be this T-Rex. I'm going to throw some mountains in here in the background, but I also want a night sky in the background. So there's everything. And that looks incredibly atrocious. Now there's more than one way that we can rearrange these. I could click on this and click on transform and change everything here. I like eyeballing it a bit more so I can mess with this and just increase the size of it. That's filling the space a bit more. Let's drag this down so we can see the moon a little bit. That'll be good. Okay, mountains. You know, line them up right here, just like that. The T-Rex is way too large. We're going to shrink that T-Rex down. If I wanted to keep the T-Rex to scale, I would be holding a key on the keyboard. If you hold the shift key on the keyboard, when you make it bigger or smaller, it stays the same height versus width. If you don't care about that, just click on any of those little squares and you can move it around a little more freely. For this particular animation, it doesn't matter so much. If it was a picture of a person or a video that I was manipulating this way, that would really matter. And I'm going to put my T-Rex over here. And I'm going to put my hills that are my foreground over here. Okay, now we are ready to start animating. And there's a few ways we can do this, but I'm going to be using keyframes. So let's start with our bushes. I am going to have the bushes slowly moving across the screen. And actually, I think I have this backwards. I want them moving starting here and then moving across. So that's how we're going to do it. And we are going to click on this little triangle. And we want transform. And we're going to do position. And you see how that little diamond showed up right there? That is a keyframe. It says, hey, at this point in the video, we're going to make these be exactly where that is. And that's great. Now I'm going to move this all the way over to the end of my clip, 30 seconds over. And I'm going to drag these hills across. And oh look, it's creating another keyframe all the way over, which is exactly what I want for these hills. I want it to be a steady, solid movement. OK, so the hills are done. Now, on to the mountains. Now, next up, if I can see what I'm doing here, is going to be my dinosaur. And that's going to be a bit trickier but doable. So, dinosaur is going to start off here. I'm right at the right spot of the timeline. I am going to do the same thing I've done before where I go into transform and pick position. But this time, 
instead of just dragging it all the way across, I am going to move forward a little bit. And I'm going to say my dinosaur moves down. And I'm going to move this forward a little bit. I'm going to move my dinosaur back up. Move this forward. Down. Move this back over here. Move. Oop. Let's undo that. And if you notice what I'm doing, it's creating a zigzag pattern here. That is exactly what I want. It's going to look like my dinosaur. Oops, I'm just clicking on the wrong thing. But fortunately, Control Z is my best friend. Command Z if you have to be using a Mac. And I admit I'm rushing this. I'm not trying to be incredibly careful. But it's a tutorial. I'm not trying to make this perfect. I'm just trying to make this good enough for my viewers to get the concept. Well, let's see how this works so far. Let's rewind and hit play. And as you can see, my dinosaur is walking through the landscape. Now, I should probably explain what I did with my hills and mountains. I made the hills be incredibly long, and I made the mountains be longer than the area I intended to animate, but still kind of long, but not as long as the hills. Uh, the reason for that is perspective. If you are up close to something, and the next time you are in a vehicle, look out the window and you'll see this for yourself. Things that are really close to you will appear to move by faster. Things that are further away will appear to move by slower. And that's really just because of perspective. Things that are in the sky will appear to not move at all. Uh, you might even look at the moon and think it's following you if you're particularly young enough. Now, I could still move these keyframes around. I could slow this down immensely just by spacing these further apart. So just because a keyframe is in a specific location does not mean it's carved in stone. I could even move the individual keyframes around if I wanted to. So I've got that going for me, and I can just go back and hit play. And right here it's slowing down because I put more space in between. So these are all things that you can adjust after the fact also. Once your composite shot's all done, you go back to your editor, make sure your composite shot is in your timeline, this is where you'd also be able to add sound effects and music and all that so you can get it to work properly. And if you don't like what you see in your animation, you go back into the composite shot to do the editing. So that's the basics of how to edit in animations using HitFilm for Express. I left out changing scale. I left out rotation. These are things you can mess with also. But... Now that you understand position, the rest of these should be somewhat easy to figure out on your own. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.